Collective Awakening podcast, sharing truth and knowledge in this time of conscious awakening with Chris and Stephen. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Collective Awakening podcast with Chris and Stephen at the Purple Mountain Spiritual and Wellbeing Centre. And in this episode, we're going to talk everything smudging, cleansing and clearing. So we're hoping to bring some knowledge to you that will resonate in some way or form. Uh, but before we start off, we're going to talk about uh, things going on collectively, uh, what we're feeling in the air this last few weeks. So I'm going to come to Stephen and say, um, what do you feel has been happening as we navigate through this energy and journey on the earth plane? Well, I don't know if anybody noticed, but it was a full moon last night and the night before again. And it seemed that the energies, when a full moon arises, it seems a lot of things get pulled up, doesn't it? That's how I feel anyway. So over these past couple of years, I've become very sensitive to the power of the moon. So collectively and, and the energy of the moon is just pulling stuff up. And I can feel that energetically uh, within my own physical body. I can feel mucus coming up. So for me, it's a lot happening physically so i'm just um really mindful and heartful of what i need to do and 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 sort of the big thing at the moment chris how i feel what i need to learn is rest and i think this is a lot of us are feeling this feeling of fatigue this feeling of really deep tiredness it's almost like it's the spirit of the bear that rises and what i mean by that is this feeling of hibernation this feeling of rest, this feeling of of slowing down. And um, I know I'm a very active, I'm a very active person. I like to be busy. I like to be doing stuff. But then if my soul, which is linked to the cosmic energy and universal energy is saying, slow down, you need to rest, you need to recuperate, you need to heal. So as I've been slowing down, um, my body's telling me I'm slowing down for you. So I, my soul, my spirit has to listen. So it's this feeling of fatigue. And I know you've been feeling that the same as well, haven't you, Chris? Uh, yeah. And I have spoke to a few people uh, in our community and wider community have felt a little bit the same. It seems to be passing this week. Um, it, am I right in saying it's the beaver moon this week? The, the beaver moon. Yeah. 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 Um, so I do remember that one when it comes around. Uh so yeah always um changes a foot when it's a full moon as well when that energy comes around but maybe you could comment on this video wherever you're listening to it or if you're watching us uh of what you've been feeling that'd be good we'd love to hear your feedback um we're open to that but we're going to get to this subject to this podcast and we want to talk about smudging clearing and cleansing um and where do we start? I feel a good place to start actually is is the home. Yeah, your home is your sanctuary. Um, and as we physically clean our homes, we do our dusting and hoovering and we keep our clean our rooms clean. And as they're physically clean, they are energetically we're cleaning as well. So it's important to cleanse our homes. And in cleansing our homes, that's sometimes it's not always outer sources. Sometimes it's internal, what's going on inside the home. Perhaps it's a difficult time for the family or you individually that you're going through something emotionally. Um, so we're almost like hoovering the energy, if that makes sense. Uh, but Stephen, where would you start with this subject? What, what do you feel is an important point? Well, I think you made an excellent point there because I think I think you're right. Your home is your sanctuary. And I always feel whatever, you know, where you work in, you might be off out at work. You might be busy with your family, you know, traveling. But as soon as you get home, it's not just the material things, you know, having a nice door, having a nice carpet, having beautiful things, material things. They don't really serve the true spirit. It's all about how you feel. How do you feel in your home? And that, I think that's really, really important. But I, I, I feel when we, when we look at smudging, there does seem, we use the word protection, don't we, a lot about spiritual protection. And, and I personally, with my experience that over the years, a lot of people have hidden away and used protection as a protective force. And what I mean by, by, by that 
is that we all need protection and we can use smudging to protect us. But what is our greatest protection is our own light, is our own positivity. So where you were touching upon it a little bit before, Chris, about, you know, when there's a lot going on at home with family, with partners and that energy, that residual energy is created in the home that could uh, can maybe disrupt the vibrations of the home. Yes, herbs can be used to clear away that heavy residual energy, that stagnant energy and cleanse the home. But our greatest way of prevent prevention and clearing is our own spiritual light, isn't it? Is our I know you're very big on that, aren't you, Chris? About your mindset, being positive, being optimistic, because that is our greatest protection. I feel. Yeah, there's um, the, it, absolutely, um, but there there are some wonderful spiritual tools which I would say can enhance that, if that makes sense that we can make use and utilize. Um, but also one of the biggest um, ways of clearing the home is actually through the power of prayer and intention as well. Uh, speaking out loud and, uh, you know, meditation as well, that can lift the vibration as a home. Music, which doesn't get talked about enough really, is can lift the vibrations of the home as well. Yeah, I mean, you've you've touched upon a very important point there when we talk about prayer and a lot of people are frightened. And it's like when we use the word philosophy or inspiration or we use the word prayer, a lot of people sink. And, and because religion has taken something that has been very pure over thousands of years, nothing to do with religion and prayer really is a, is a great way that works very well with herbs because like you said with intention it all comes from the heart when we work with the heart it opens the soul and when we open the soul it opens the energy of our ancestors prayer is an opportunity a key to open the soul a telephone call with god with the with the creator with the gods the goddesses whoever you have faith in your ancestors your grandma that perhaps you were very close to we pray for them for guidance and inspiration ultimately as well because it's a smudging talk and we talk about different herbs we, we're praying and invoking the spirit of the plant into the space as well aren't we so i think so do you think chris do you feel that plants have an energy force and how do we invoke that energy force well absolutely everything is an energy even down to the earth itself um so it's looked at uh, the wonderful way of looking at this is uh, there are many wonderful tools that are provided to us uh, by mother earth uh, to naturally do what we need to um and we're going to talk about them and i believe everything has an energy now i'm going to touch on some of it because i feel you've brought up an important um subject there maybe accidentally <laughs> i don't know <laughs> but it's not only the plants that have energy but every item now this is every item that is brought into the home every person that comes into your home carries their own energy uh you will uh collect energy as you go about your day so this is important as well um you know items certain items this is why sometimes they say beware of those um with gifts uh, because they're not always what they seem you know everything carries an energy and that might not always be uh intentional you know to cause problems that might be that that somebody was in a particular emotional state when they held that item and that emotion to some degree can be still held within the item so items that's important um but all of this a little bit like steven said is what will help you navigate through anything is trust your feelings because the question that may come up as we go through this podcast is when do I smudge? How often do I smudge? Well, trust yeah. your feelings. You wake up and say, I feel I need to do this today. So it's when you feel you need to do it. But as we talk about, I'm going to show you something one here. We can light one. Uh, this is a smudge stick. This is a California sage, which is used by a lot of people. Could I light it? Don't worry, but all safety precautions have been taken. So don't set myself on fire. There you go. Hope you can feel that wherever you are. Can you smell that, Stephen? <laughs> Do your yeah, side. I love saying. And, and as you can, so anybody who's not familiar, 
uh, this is what it does. It smolders away a uh, little bit different to incense, which are also a great way of uh, clearing and uh, vibration or lifting vibrations. And it'll just gently smolder away there. Yeah, so that's white sage for you. And they're very good to bind them little bundles because you can just hold them in your hand because, of course, it's important that you don't burn yourself. Uh, and as you're smudging as well, it's enhancing, like we said, the power of prayer. Uh, because this sage stick, as wonderful as it is, and given from Mother Earth, needs your energy as well to enhance that. that that's going to, um, that intention is going to assist in speaking from the heart. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything highfalutin, it, just as long as the words that you mean, that's all that matters. Uh, a very good place when you use a California sage stick to start by your front door uh, and work your way around from there. Um, do, do you use sage quite often, Stephen? Um, it, it depends because it depends what I'm clearing and what I need to clear. Um, I think the, the sage bundle that you're speaking of there is the Californian white sage, which for me is yeah. a lot more pungent, is a lot stronger. So the bundles are great because they give up a very strong and powerful energy. Now, there is another sage called the desert, white, desert sage, which is a lot more smoky and a lot quicker. And I like using that as well, but I like using uh, the, the sage because sage is great to dispel negative energy. You know, if, if you just feel sometimes we can have a collection for every other reason in the home, not because somebody's had a row or anything, the home generally does need to be cleansed at least at least once a month if not once a week particular what kind of work you know if you're doing a lot of spiritual work at home or you've got a lot of people coming in and out of the home use the white sage chris is right the white sage is very powerful and again always start um start off with the front door we all start off what we call the mouth of the house a little bit it's very similar to feng shui chris if you remember and and when you walk into any room you know, any room, always walk and start from uh, the doorway of every door and that just cleanse and then open a window as well and just let, just uh, push, you know, with with, with your mind, with, with your intention, just push away any of that residual energy from the bedroom, from uh, wh whichever room you are smudging in. So, yeah, sage is probably one of the most common herbs but i just want to mention a point there about herbs because herbs are there to serve they are humble servants for man for mankind so what i mean by that is that we we must show gratitude and respect always with the tools that we use particularly in smudging so always show appreciation and respect they're there to serve humble servants to to the way we work as shamans as healers whatever you want to call yourself it, it matters not you don't have to be anybody you could be just yourself and you just want to smudge your your home always start off with 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 the sage it's a powerful powerful herb um, is there any other kind of herbs that you use, Chris, um, in, in your house, in your home, that you find very beneficial for your smudging? One of my favourites is frankincense. I love frankincense. I love um, the, the scent of it and the energy as well. Uh, and I actually find it's very good to remove what I would say like stagnant energies. Um, yeah, so I like frankincense. Yeah, well, I think it would be great because when we look at different herbs, a lot of people think of just leaves when we look at leaves yeah. and the leaves. But there's also things like bark. And remember, frankincense is a resin. So the resin yeah. is like the liquid, the blood, the lifelong blood. And resins are, though when you burn them, they go, they... Um, they expel a lot quicker than something like a leaf. <clears throat> the frankincense is extremely powerful herb. For me personally, when I use frankincense, it's great to open the heart and it invokes a sort of our spiritual essence. A lot of um, 
Middle Eastern and Egyptian culture, some of the shamans and oracles, some of the ancient tombs, lots of frankincense and myrrh and things like that were found in the tomb. So it's it's a herb that our ancestors used and we are still using. And I know you're very passionate. Sometimes when I come to the centre, you've got bellows full of frankincense that you're that you are smoking away and it's very pungent isn't it? it's very strong and, and, and it smells quite sweet as well frankincense so um a, another herb it's not really well we call it a herb is actually from a tree bark and it's called palo santo it's and i know you here. you i'm just gonna say i bet you've got some so what does it smell like chris it's hard to say isn't it that um it smells very obviously. sweet Obviously, yeah, very sort of woody, but it's quite aromatic. That's the word as well. It's almost bordering on like a perfumey type smell, a sweet perfume. Uh, one, it, one of my favourites. Well, Palo Santo is, is you, you can use any herb, actually. Palo Santo is really good for cleansing as well. But also, uh, if you've got somebody that is quite sick, uh, that's quite poorly, um, and you want to invoke again we're going back to prayer you know you know you don't have to do that out loud you can do that in your mind you can have a little altar a lot of us will have a little altar table and we will sit and we pray and we send our love out and our healing energy and we'll burn a bit of palo santo and that palo santo the energy remember what chris said before everything's energy and the palo santo energy will be taken for that deep cleansing and that deep healing. So for me, anybody who wants to get into smudging, Paolo Santo is another herb that everybody can get. And then they're not that expensive. Where can you buy? Where do you get your Paolo Santo from, Chris? Well, I think actually I bought the last lot at Mind, Body and Spirit Fair, but um, that's wonderful if you can actually buy it from somewhere. Um, that you can see it and feel it because everything as we said is energy so uh, it's always good with any sort of incense i know there's a lot of places available online that you can buy things i'm not going to name them but we all know what they are uh, where things arrive very quickly um but it is good if you can buy them in person where pop possible so these mind body and spirit events affairs uh, shops uh, any spiritual shops nearby uh, that sell these sorts of things it's good but also obviously with a lot of the herbs as well you can grow them uh, lavender uh, most people have lavender in the garden and and you can actually get into um, picking these herbs have growing them and then drying them out and using mm -hmm. them from your own garden which is the, the best way a wonderful way that your energy and love's been uh, nurtured nurtured that plant as well so it works yeah, you, better you yeah, you made a really good point there because when we're looking at everything's energy, uh, we want to know where the, where that herb has been cultivated, where that herb's been harvested, because it's all about respect and gratitude. And, and when we do grow, and when we do this, I know a, a few friends of ours actually go out in the forest. It's something that you, anybody can do if you know what you're doing, and particularly you know when you're picking them. Just show respect. Don't hurt the plant. Ask permission of the plant as you harvest them. And, and really, a lot of the time, the plant isn't hurt. These herbs have been have been serving mankind for thousands, even millions and millions of years. I just want to make a point there. I think it might brought a little bit of confusion with anybody listening. Now, you just shown there with the bundle, which is basically very tightened leaves of the white sage and then wrapped up. Then you've got the resins, which is tiny pieces. Now, how do we burn resins or loose herbs, Chris? How do we burn them? We burn them on little what we call coal pieces, uh, a little piece of coal. Where you can buy them in a pack and then you get a plate that's heat resistant or you can actually buy uh, burners for these things as well uh, and place them in there and you just sprinkle a few on top and you can do that with other herbs as well you can do that with lavender and the desert sage stephen spoke about that you can buy um where you can sprinkle it on and you'll actually find uh, this is where you start to experiment that certain herbs work well together so a little bit of that and, and mixing some in and making your own combinations um it's increasing the power, there. increasing the power, then, isn't it? 
Yeah, I used to burn a lot of incense, uh, really, when I started, which are wonderful incense sticks and such. Uh, but once I got into burn the resins and the the herbs, they're really wonderful. Um, and also, what I want to point out in this talk, sometimes when we talk about clearing, um, immediately I find people's thoughts seem to go to negative energies, unenlightened energies. And remember yeah. as well, we're um, by clearing energy and saying these prayers, it's a wonderful time to invoke and connect with the energy of our ancestors, our family and guides and inspirers and welcome them in as well. Uh, our doorkeepers and protectors and connect with the spirit world i like to do a little bit of smudging before i have a meditation or burn a little bit of palo santo in the room uh, just in preparation uh, i do before these podcasts actually i just i do that within this room just to try and set the energy and invite my guides and inspirers in for, for whatever is to be yeah and and, and the way i i mean i could chip it chip in there with it really with your with your thoughts there and it's just really making space for for good energy because you know we're creating a space and and often when we do any kind of spiritual work whatever that might be uh, your space is a very very important part of of that journey you know even if you're doing reading healing even just sitting and meditating you're just showing respect and gratitude making room for good energy and, and like like we said before, the the sage is a very good one just to clear any negative energy. But I want to be talking about a, a, a really really beautiful herb, which is one of my absolute favourites that really bring in very sweet and loving energy. So when you've done some smudging and you've cleared away, you know you might have just moved into a new house, and you've just moved, or even you know I've, I've i've heard people smudging the cars they've just brought a new car or an old car and they're smudging the car remember everything has residual energy and yes sage is great to get rid of those negative energy sweet grass is one of the four directions native american indian herbs that is used and you can get a uh, can't you chris the four directions herbs bundles which again what chris was saying four herbs traditionally the four direction herbs are cedar sweet gas sage and tobacco and we'll talk about tobacco in a minute because a lot of people have a very very negative perspective on tobacco don't they chris a lot of people think very negatively about tobacco and associate tobacco with with just lung cancer yeah and as as in most things they you trace them back and and in the purest form that there's nothing wrong with them it's just when they start being messed with and chemicals get added and other things and it becomes a cocktail that isn't good for you at all uh, which is a story we've heard many many times before with many different things um but yeah it's absolutely that that point you made in sweet grass it is, a, is a wonderful thing the other thing i wanted to mention is uh, valerian and also um lavender as well and when we talk of in times of uh meditation or preparation but also what about preparation before you go to bed now sometimes in in your room you're going to sleep in your bedroom it's nice to burn a little bit of lavender uh, in your room before you go to sleep and just in preparation for that rest and calm something i like to do not all the time but on some occasions and perhaps if you have sleep problems or uh, you have trouble settling burning a little bit of lavender not too much i'm always quite cautious how much i burn in your bedroom because you don't want it affecting your chest or your breathing uh, in the night a little bit but i find that can be quite powerful as well so what what yeah, are your, yeah, um, what are yours Stephen? what do you like to use um aside from your, your meditation and such in say your home uh rituals of cleansing what do you use most often and how do you do that well believe it or not we, we're talking about smudging but not not necessarily always the context of herbs i love using sound healing yeah. to smudge my house I, I love using sound and that's another way you can use like chris mentioned it in the beginning with music a piece of music that you absolutely love you go around the house and you just open your house just cleanse and get a feather while you're using your sound ball i'm using my sound ball and i'm using a feather and i'm just cleansing my house from the doorway into the four corners of the room have the window open so any residual energy can leave um 
leave, leave, leave the bedroom or whatever room that you're smudging. But I just want to go back to the point with the sleep there, Chris, is that I think what would be a little bit of advisement to people, because a lot of people will say they've got like chest problems and lung problems, asthma and things like that, that just have a bit of a window open as you do about that when you do that smudging and that won't keep the smoke in the room as much or do about an hour before. Um, yeah, but that's you know, what I would recommend. An hour before is really good. Yeah, but I just want to, it comes back to that question you just asked me, uh, the other herb that a lot of people don't know about, or you might do, those that are listening, is Osho root. Oh, the yeah. Osho root, which is so, it smells very spicy. And actually you can chew the Osho root, not to swallow it, chew it uh, at the side of your gum. Great for in preparation for healing but also traditionally for the native american indians osho root burn a bit of osho root i was going to say in your teepee but a lot of us don't have teepees <laughs> no. but burn a bit of osho, no but burn a bit of osho root with a bit of the lavender uh before bed and it really helps it, it sort of bring you into a bit of a deeper state in your dream state on the astral plane and it enhances your dreams. So, and and I just want to make a point as well. You know, we we're getting we're giving you all these tips, me and Chris, smudging and clearing, cleansing. Everything's an experiment, trial and error. You, I always say to people, well, how do I know that the herb has a spirit? Well, every herb does have a spirit. Like every flower has a spirit. Every animal has a spirit. And we've got to respect it and show gratitude. But I always say, great advisement, Chris. Yeah. It, it is for people to burn that herb, burn a bit of that herb, and to sit and meditate with that herb, connect with that herb, make a connection with it, like you do with crystals. I want to backtrack a little bit on a couple of things. First of all, the tobacco thing. Maybe if you could go into that a little bit more for us, Stephen. Yeah, well, <clears throat> I know quite a bit about the, the, the tobacco side, which traditionally was grown um in south america and the south americans and the north americans have been using uh the tobacco herb actually a lot of the shamans say it's the oldest herb that they use to cleanse and heal it's a very very powerful herb that um shamans use to cleanse <laughs> I don't mean to frighten people, but a lot of shamans will use things through exorcism, use them through sort of heavier healing treatments. They use tobacco, but also on a, on a bit of a lighter note, tobacco is very, very powerful in terms of, again, cleansing the home and also protecting the home. So when we use it, things like sage, where we're dispelling energy, sweet grass, bringing energy in cedar as a blessing, the home tobacco protects the home and you can smell tobacco i'm not talking about cigarettes here because when you smell pure tobacco a you can't really inhale it because it actually it makes you cough and sometimes you can you violently sick through it but it's a very very powerful herb to really protect the home pure tobacco where you can buy pure tobacco is from south america you i think etsy uh, some of the shamanic shops there across the North and South America, Mexican, will sell the pure tobacco. And it's a great one to add into some of your four directions and make your own little glass jar and, and mix them up a little bit. So there's a little bit about tobacco. Yeah, there, there are people that um, do what we've already talked about who make little, I don't know, we put it, put some herbs and resins together and, and put them in little pots for specific uh, things as well that goes on a lot so as there, as with everything it's a little bit of an adventure I, enjoy uh take yourself on a journey and and see what fits right for you uh, always trust your feelings that's so important um and Stephen mentioned sounds singing bowls chimes uh music it lifts the vibrations uh, and and it's very very underestimated i feel um and that that's very good if you have a little bit of a perhaps you're not keen on burning or smudging, which it isn't for everyone. 
Um, so that's another way to do it. You can go around the home with a singing bowl, with perhaps chimes. There's, there's some wonderful, wonderful tools out there. Um, so that is another way of cleansing, playing particular songs, uplifting songs, because um, uh, each word of each song is an energy within itself. So it's picking um, those songs that have high frequencies. Uh, classical music has a very high frequency. Very, very um, much so. Also white noise as well, and uh, natural sounds can be wonderful. It's whatever you're drawn to, really. So, again, uh, take yourself on that journey whenever you feel it's right. Um, now, what I want to mention is, Stephen, and, and I want your opinions on this as well, <laughs> and it goes back to what we said at the beginning, which is everything begins with you. So we, uh, everything starts with us, with our intention. And what I can find, find with because we didn't mention crystals actually in terms of clearing as well, which can assist. But what can happen sometimes is we talked about using things, less is more. And that is true in many ways. And sometimes what we've witnessed is what can happen is we begin to start smudging twice a day, every day and overdoing what's already there if that makes sense overdoing it when really it begins with the practices you're keeping uh, and that's the practices within practicing self-love within yourself being mindful of your words which nobody's perfect and um, observing the energy in your home because your home is your sanctuary so and 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 being um, I don't want to say cautious, but being aware of who you're inviting into your home as well and what sort of energy they're carrying or how you're feeling. And, and we are in a world that's changing all the time as well. So the energy of our home will shift, you know. Um, so what's your thoughts on that, Stephen? Because it's something we have both witnessed, isn't it, where we, sometimes we can fall into a cycle of overdoing it. Into, in. It's unfortunate. Yeah, unfortunately, it is human nature to do so. I mean, anything that gets brought into into the Western world, sadly, gets used and abused. And that's where I feel that if people learn about gratitude and respect, then they would have a better understanding about what they're using. And unfortunately, a lot of people are involved in this kind of work that shouldn't be in this kind of work until they've done more work on themselves. And really, I, th I feel the the, the, the advisement there is really stepping into guiding people to empower themselves to step into their power more. And when and again, about what I said 20 minutes ago is is about your positive affirmation, your own spiritual light brings harmony in, into a room, into your bedroom, into your house, your own set of your own frame of mind, your own heart heart um how balanced your heart is it's also a mirror and a reflection of the energy that you are creating and again it's about really empowering people in the understanding that we are powerful creators and we can create very very dark and fear-based residual energy we know that because we, we have light and dark within all of us, but also we can create beautiful energies of light, of healing, of love. So again, we are creator of both light and fear, light and dark, if you can say that. And you I just know, want to make you know, one more point. You know, it comes Go to mind with that, Stephen, one of your favourite sayings of the moment, which is probably the challenge we all faced at some point in time, observe, don't react. Because when we react, we create an energy. Yeah, and I think that's really important when we talk about, particularly when we're living with people, living with other souls, not always like-minded souls, uh, children, pets, family, that everybody carries a frequency, everybody carries an energy. And our energies fluctuate depending on our emotions. And sometimes when we have a bit of a crap day, we will create, we will pick up on, like Velcro, wherever we be in shopping, to the nursing home, 
uh, we've just been for a bit of a walk. And sometimes we will pick up residual energy. That's human. We can't always be on guard all the time, can we? We can't. We, that 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 set that that mindset can't be on that level all the time. So we do pick things up, and sometimes we do need to come home and have a bit of a smudge. But I just want to make one more point there to your question. There is my big passion is don't wait to for the house the home your sanctuary your meditation room your healing practice your place at work to get to a stage where you feel sick you feel negative prevention i always try to empower people and inspire don't wait for things to be toxic don't wait for an argument to happen look at things that you can do to prevent to fortify to protect and which will lead me to my question to you chris which is when we're looking at preventative things what are the some of the things which a lot of people use salt so what is the power oh, of yeah. salt chris i thought you were going to ask me about animals because you mentioned about animals <laughs> and uh we'll powerful. talk about that in a minute uh, salt yeah now some people um, might consider this to be uh, like a bit of a an old tale, and what we'd call in the UK an old wives' tale um, of the salt round the home. But that carries, you know, vibration energy again. Uh, and we do that here at the Purple Mountain. Um, we ask for that protection, and we'll place salt right round the, the home, and that that and and our sanctuary, and that creates its own field of protection as well. So salt, yeah, super powerful. Well, so we know we know a lot uh, about salt, really, because we use Himalayan yeah. salt lamps, don't we? Yeah, we use him our Himalayan salt lamps as well. I can't believe I forgot about them, but they're great, great for. Uh, I have one in nearly every room in my home. The Himalayan salt is in itself very protective energy, a very cleansing energy physically as well, because it's actually cleansing the air, absorbing. You know, um, what we don't need and expelling. Uh, the the cleaner air as it is as we have them so they're they're wonderful things to have the Himalayan and very very popular now as well which is great to see uh, and and as I say with everything the proofs in the pudding I know a lot of people who've uh, purchased Himalayan salt lamps and placed them in the bedroom or room and been a bit calmer in that particular room it's helped them with sleep as well so those that I think you make a good point there. Prevention, everything's important. Don't let it get to the stage where we're in a muddle. Um, and the other thing is that you can do, you can actually buy chunks of Himalayan salt and place them on windowsills, rose quartz on your windowsills as well. That's very protective. Any any place you feel you need them. Um, of course, being cautious sometimes not to overdo it, uh, but it's wonderful. Also, so you can place crystals in the garden as well. Go with your feelings with it. Um, another thing we do here at the Purple Mountain is we actually hang sage as well and herbs uh, on the doorways, also as a, a protection tool. Uh, absolutely. And another thing, you know, we put crystals on, on, on door ledges on the top, you know, very small pieces. And uh, we do that as, as people walk through the door, that crystal energy would just purify cleanse uh, the auric field because it's actually in the auric field where majority of attachments can happen but going back to the point there putting some salt a line of salt outside the door that should be done very regularly particularly if you've got a lot of people coming in out in, in and out the house and you can do it in the back doorway as well so remember the the roof the, the door the, the the mouth of the house and then the back of the house is when we look at the feng shui we want that energy coming in and then coming out we don't want the energy to be trapped and that's why we all start off at the door but salt another is thing. an amazing amazing um yeah. mineral that can be useful for all sorts of smudging another one's chimes as well chimes and bells uh, in the garden and in the doorway and then again giving their own sound and and brings a strong protection forward so it's all it's all keeping that energy fortified and can't say it enough your home is your sanctuary or even we could extend this to a workspace and uh, not just for spiritual work but wherever you do your work a place you spend a lot of time in uh, these things are all very important uh, in in protecting that space you're in 
and keeping that space safe and calm as well. And wow. People will, no, no, people will, and the other thing I want to add, sorry, Stephen, is people will feel it when there's guests in your home as well. They'll feel the energy when they come in. I, I, absolutely. Um, so I want to mention, going back to salt here, is we talk about external things, you know, we with our smudge, smudge bundle, our smudge, smudge pop, is having a salt bath also yes very very powerful way of cleansing if you've done some very deep healing work or you've had a really heavy stressful day you've been shopping all day yes shopping is stressful chris <laughs> and you go back home have a pure uh, water bath and just put all four there's lots of different salts you can use a big cup two or three cups of salt you could put even some herbs eucalyptus some dried eucalyptus you can put in you can even uh, you put some herbal tea bags in with the salt. You've got herbs already in a bundle, so it doesn't clog up the the, um, the plug. So, plug. So bath. So do you have salt baths, Chris? And do you find them beneficial? Absolutely, uh, very cleansing. Particularly if you've had uh, just going through any cut process or you feel uh the need to very good for the the mind body and the soul absolutely uh, very calming and again something you can create your own little ceremony and ritual around um all these things if we start to recognize that everything carries energy you start to look at the world in a very different way and it's not about becoming too over cautious but it's about becoming aware that's just being aware of what's what's happening around us and what we're feeling at any one time. But also it's important that if we do feel what we'd call maybe negative energy or energies that don't belong, that we're not, we're certainly not saying the way is not to shove them out or to throw them is always in unconditional love. So even if you feel somebody is sending you negative thoughts, yeah you don't have to accept them you can say you know i do not accept that into my home or within my energy but always sending them back with unconditional love we don't want to feed that fire uh, and that's all it will do if we react is to always with unconditional love uh, and that that is the greatest power we hold our light within that candle um and you know that 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 will help anything it will always lift the vibrations but if we ever begin to get angry that that will that will change the energy around you yeah absolutely absolute spot on there i just want to change uh, a little bit of the the subject to feathers i want to talk about feathers oh, yeah. because because um we're talking about this to, for me personally there are two types of feathers single feathers or feather fans I know we use our works a little bit different at Purple Mountain when we do ceremonial work. We use a lot of feather fans, which for me invokes a little bit more energy, a little bit more power, particularly when we're smudging down clients before we invoke our answers into the space. But if anybody's at home, Chris, my advisement would be that the right feather will come to somebody, will, will be brought yeah, to them. Can, you, you can find feathers that happens all the time. They can just appear um and and yeah there are lots of wonderful places uh, where people uh put together feathers and create feather fans uh with lots of love and intention so again um follow your feelings what works right for you every time and and, and again yeah. i mean we, we can't talk about that in this podcast today we could maybe make another podcast on just feathers because like with with herbs uh if there are so many there's thousands of different species of bird all containing different energies i mean when you looked at the native american indian culture the condor or the eagle feather if everybody would have one of them extremely powerful and and the native american indians would use the eagle feather in the smudging practice because the eagle feather they believed the eagle was the closest to father sky and as the smoke was risen, as the, as the smoke rises, we use the feather to uh, invoke and our prayers are carried in the smoke. Our prayer and our intention is, is a carry into the smoke and we use the power of the feather, the power of the bird 
that is still within that feather. And now we at the centre, we use a lot of turkey feathers, don't we? We use lots of turkey feathers. But also um, recently I brought some um, from London, some, uh, what do you call the birds, the blackbirds there, Chris? Little raven. Raven, raven feathers. A raven, raven feathers. Yeah. Um, my mind went blank there. The raven feathers, <laughs> which is a very beautiful feather. And again, it's all about what Chris was saying again before. When you go to a herb, herbal shop or to a shamanic shop or you go going online, you see what you're drawn to. The right feather will come to you. I've got a beautiful, I like using a peacock feather that is within some other feather fan that I brought that I don't use very often, actually, that is in my drawer uh, at the centre. So, again, it's about what kind of work that you're doing. Uh, do you like using feathers, Chris, when you're smudging? Yes, very much. I, I, I feel it's very powerful. And, again, and something that's been... Uh, that's, really gifted to us in many ways that we can use uh, uh, they're all wonderful tools that if respected and shown with gratitude and strong intention of love can be wonderful they can enhance and assist us uh, as we navigate through our own lives and the doors around us who we have to hold space for sometimes and assist as they'll hold space for us um, it, it can help us a great deal it can lift us protect us guide us and um, make us aware that we're never alone. So I feel that's, um, I hope we've shared some information there that you can all resonate with. Now, the other thing I want to say is if you have any questions about what we've said, please feel free to comment below. Uh, we'd love that. We'd love your feedback. Um, if you've received something specific from this um, podcast and this show, um, please comment below and also if you perhaps as a subject that you'd like to hear more about a certain subject we'd love that suggestion so we'd like to hear from you our wonderful listeners and thank you for supporting this podcast and Stephen have you got any words that you want to share with us before we finish up this episode yeah, well, really, I mean, a pod podcast like this is really, it, it's very difficult to share 20 years of experience with everybody. But really, our aim, isn't it, Chris, is just to it, hopefully inspire the listener to go out there and, 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 and do your own research. And we hope that we've inspired you to be a little bit more mindful about your home, your workspace, your spiritual space, and really open up the doors to something that's absolutely amazing and a fantastic tool smudging there's thousands of herbs get there do your research find your way absolutely amazing journey so i'd like to personally th thank you for listening to us okay thank you friends and we're sending our love here from the purple mountain till we speak again which will be very very soon Thank you for watching the Collective Awakening podcast. For more information on the Purple Mountain Spiritual and Wellbeing Centre, you can visit our website at thepurplemountain.co.uk and don't forget to click and subscribe.